President Bush is putting the hard push on science education in our schools. He says it's vital to our workforce as we try to compete globally. But this comes at a time when a national debate is raging over what exactly should be taught in the science classroom. The state of Ohio has just ended a policy of teaching intelligent design as an alternative to evolution in public schools. Dozens of more states continue to debate that issue, and right now we're going to talk about just what intelligent design is and whether it's vital for our students as they uh, look to complete globally. Brian Alters is a professor at McGill University. He's also the director of the Evolution Research Center. And Professor Tom Woodward of Trinity College authored the book Doubts About Darwin, A History of Intelligent Design. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Thank you very much. Brian, let Good me start morning. with you. Well, we talked about the president uh, in his State of the Union uh, pushing competitiveness, pushing the sciences in, uh, in public schools. Is intelligent design a step backward on that front? Absolutely, it is. It's not a science. It's not considered a science in the scientific community. It's not in the peer-reviewed literature. It's not sponsored by grants at the federal or state level. Teachers should not be pretending that it's science to children in schools. Well, someone, we were just talking about this during the commercial break. Uh, evolution is a theory as well. Would you call that science? A theory in the scientific sense that means an explanation. It has an incredible amount of evidence. It's considered factual. The occurrence of evolution is considered a fact in the scientific community. It has not been debated seriously in the scientific community for a long time, much longer than my lifetime. Tom, you are a, uh, a former Darwinist. In fact, uh, you said you were a vociferous Darwinist at one point, uh, and now you've changed your views. What, what changed them? Well, yeah, when I was a student at Princeton University, I felt it my duty to re-educate those uh, people who were out of their minds and doubting the theory of evolution. And uh, far apart from anything ever, uh, having to do with religion, I changed my mind based on the evidence. And um, Dr. Uh, uh, Alters is, uh, I think, wrong on three points. Uh, there is overwhelming evidence now that is coming in from almost every field that is questioning the foundations of what we call macroevolution. See, we're not questioning microevolution, the, the minor tweakings of animals. Secondly, intelligent design is in the peer-reviewed literature. Matter of fact, six articles in the last one year, last year, mm -hmm. have come out strongly showing the evidence for design and about six or seven peer-reviewed books, including my own, which was my PhD dissertation here, The History of Design, I think shows that the peer-reviewed literature is right into this. And Case Decker at University of Delft in Netherlands, everybody knows who he is. He's nanotechnology guru of this day. He said in a conference in Prague, Czech Republic, to 700 Europeans, intelligent design is the wave of the future. Well, the wave of the future, but as you know, Tom, a lot of critics call it creationism light. Uh, how do you convince parents whose kids are in high school science classes that this is going to help them in the sciences? Well, I think it, uh, on three levels. The facts, I think, are overwhelmingly in favor of intelligent design in terms of nature-driven writing of the 20,000 genes on the genome. You see, our, our genetic makeup is like a hard drive designed by Microsoft. I saw an article just this week where they're describing kernels and uh, plugins and gene batteries. These are terms that really come from Microsoft, mm. I think. And so what we're going to need to understand our um, cellular makeup and the nanotechnology there is that this is not a religious-based idea. Intelligent design does not depend on a single religious premise. And so it's light years right. apart from creationism. Brian, if, if that is true, do you think that uh, people who are hardcore evolutionists are losing at least uh, the war on the public relations front? Well, it's not true. The National Academy of Sciences, our nation's most prestigious scientific organization, says intelligent design is not science. The largest scientific organization on the planet, the AAAS, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, says it's not science. The federal case we just had that drew so much press Intelligent design had its airing, the scientists got to say what they wanted to say, and the federal judge came down and said, intelligent design is not science. Out of the thousands of peer-reviewed articles about evolution, we don't have any journal articles that say intelligent design is science. Even if there was one or two, it'd be minuscule, and we should not have this masquerading as science to children in high schools. Get it accepted in the scientific community first, and <laughs> then it should be taught in the schools. Gentlemen, it sounds like these are, are two issues that maybe ne can't necessarily live together. Do you think there's room for both of them, Dr. Well, Alders? Can, can, can I make a No, comment? we should not have, uh, well, the question was directed to me. Um, the question is, should we teach non-science in a science classroom? No, we shouldn't. And the federal court determined it was a form of religion, a form of creationism. Mm -hmm. It should not be taught in public school science classrooms. Professor Woodward? Well, there was an error made by Dr. Alters uh, just a moment ago, earlier in the broadcast, 
Ohio State uh, State Board of Education did not end the teaching of intelligent design. The Ohio case was where they were teaching evidence against the current theory. That's what we believe in the ID movement should be taught. We believe that, that uh, state or local should not require ID to be taught because it's a new theory, like you pointed right. out yourself. Right. So, but we believe there's no reason why students couldn't be given the best evidence and arguments for and against the theory. And anybody who reads uh, Michael Denton's book, Evolution, A Theory in Crisis, or who sees Unlocking the Mystery of Life, the PBS shown documentary, will know that the evidence against the Darwinian theory, empirical evidence from every field, is now overwhelming. Gentlemen, we've got to leave it there. No one's going to solve this in four minutes, but uh, we do appreciate your time uh, trying to bring some light to this uh, difficult subject. Brian Thank Alters, you. professor at McGill University, and Tom Woodward, a professor at Trinity College.